Hey everybody, this is The Van Show and today we're talking to my friend, Robert Dean. Say hi, Robert. Hi. Hey. Now, Robert, we got some questions for you. I hope you're ready for them. I'm ready to go. Awesome. Now, the first question is, Robert, where do you live? Austin, Texas. And do you love it? I do love Austin, Texas. I love tacos. I love that I can bring my dog everywhere. There are parks and a whole bunch of nice people. Oh yeah? Now I hear that you're a freelance writer, is that correct? Yep, I write all over the city of Austin and for all over people or across the country. And then I write books and I write for magazines, I write for newspapers. I'll write for anybody that says they'll let me write stuff. Wow, that's a lot of writing. Can you, can you kind of give us a, what's a typical day for a freelance writer? Well, I have a normal job where I write for a company. It's called, and then um, I get up, I write for my day job, which is being a writer again. And then I'll come home, I'll take freelance jobs. So if it's a magazine or a newspaper, I write for the Austin American Statesman and I'll write an article for them. And then if somebody needs to have something for their website done, if they need uh, an article written for a magazine or if somebody needs a record review, I'll do that. And then once I finish those jobs, then I move on to writing books. So uh, my days will go for a very long time. And it's, and it's all writing yeah. and a little bit of eating. Yeah, and I try to take a nap every day. <laughs> it's important. It's good for the brain. Yeah, I don't go to bed till 2 or 3 in the morning every night. Oh, you stayed up past bedtime. I but I guess you're that. writing past bedtime, so that's not so bad. Now, I noticed that you made a car commercial to try to sell your writing. I did. Yeah, how did that work? I actually shot it a couple of blocks from here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, when we moved to Austin, I realized that if you wanted to be a writer in Austin, Texas, there are a whole bunch of really smart and really talented people here. And... You can't just be another one of those people. You have to be a cut above everybody else. So I worked really hard to do something that when somebody was like, I want this guy to do some work for me, they would see it and they go, oh, that's who makes a used car commercial to try to sell their writing? <laughs> it was really funny. I liked it a lot. <laughs> so that's why I did it. I was like, I need to get in front of people that'll help me, you know, survive. Now, uh, you have a new book that you're working on right now? Yeah, it's called A Hard Roll. Um, it's a New Orleans crime book it's kind of if you could mix I since it's like a whole bunch of book stuff that I don't really take if you put Pulp Fiction Dead Presidents and Goodfellas but set at New Orleans in the black market during Mardi Gras wow and not that Mardi Gras is uh some people think that at New Orleans is only Mardi Gras that's not true it just happens to take place during Mardi Gras there's a right. whole city and there's a whole lot of stuff to see there right this New Orleans is more than Bourbon Street yes sir can you explain to us, what, how do you feel about book covers? I think book covers are really important. I think that people, publishers, authors, anybody who's put a book out in any capacity should really care about the cover. Because people appreciate, the thing that's changing now is because of Kindles, because of the way that you can consume things, people should pay attention to how much care they put into how a book looks, how a book feels, the title, because that tactile experience means everything. And so if you impress somebody with a really strong cover, not just some crap that somebody pasted together on Photoshop, that makes all the difference in the world is because we have so much media coming at us for that moment, you have to really impress somebody about how good you can make a book look. And in this day and age where anybody can create something on a computer and they can, there's a million ways you can create something, it's extraordinarily important to give somebody a product that feels good and is representative of the art of the artwork itself meaning the writing you wow. you write most of your stuff is, is horror um or or crime i mean they're, they're kind of nasty subjects right yeah i i just I, i've ever since i was a little dude I always i just gravitate towards darker things since i was a kid i my when i was little i set the record when i was in third grade on book reports but what because all I was reading were Stephen King books, and I was reading <laughs> really dark stuff. And my teachers were like, why are you letting your kid read Stephen King books? He's in third grade. And my mom was like, because my kid can read a Stephen Yeah, King I mean, if you have grade. the vocabulary to understand one of those books, more power to you, buddy. That's yeah. impressive for a third grader. Yeah, I just, I've never not liked stuff that's not dark. So if it's crime, it's horror, it's just stuff that is, brings out the darker side of humanity. That's just what I'm into. I always think about like if I could write a kid's book, what would it be about? But I think I have one actually in mind that I would totally do. Yeah? I, would, I always had this idea of like running to, I'm a big proponent of that not everybody needs to go to college. 
And because of that, there's a world out there that people, kids need to realize that working blue class is okay. To work with your hands is okay. To build things, to make stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. No, it's and important. So I think we're doing a kid's book on the value of that being a builder, being a plumber, being an architect. That's a rewarding career, and people should support the blue collar the working class, and that's very important to me because I consider myself a working class writer. And I would love to do a children's book about the value of like working with your hands. You don't have to go to college. Sorry, Mom. Bye. Goodbye! <laughs>